We all love bikes, right? But there are those among us, like myself, who love all the tech and the design elements that go into not only creating the bikes that we love to ride, but all the cool parts and accessories too. So in this video, I'm gonna meet an expert and take a product from idea in my head to finished article that can actually fit onto my bike. I know, cool, right? I've just jumped in the car and I'm on my way to go and meet Tom Sturdy, the man behind Sturdy Cycles, who are renowned for their fabulous and exquisite custom titanium bikes. Now, the big difference here is lots of the components and sections of the bikes are 3D printed in titanium. Now, Ollie was fortunate enough to meet Tom Sturdy last year and talk through some of the finer details of those custom made bikes. However, Ollie left empty handed but I'm gonna plan on changing them today by designing and making and hopefully taking away my very own 3D printed part made from titanium. I oh, know, incredible, how cool is that? Right, better focus on the road. We're, um, I think we're already around the corner now. Yeah, it's clicking back. Guys, all right? Oh yeah? All right, Tom. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, this place is incredible. Thank you, yeah. Quite a step up from, what was it, your shed? Yeah, 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 shed in my garden. So. I feel like I've locked right in. So I've, I've come in with the idea of taking a part from idea in my head to finished article product. Yep. You're the mouth of the job. What are your ideas, first of all? I think that's the first thing. A head unit mount. And I'd say I'd quite like a GoPro mount on there as well. Yeah, cool. Um, so what is the first step of the process to go from get this idea out of my head, do we use a computer? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, getting just a list of all of the stuff that isn't gonna be in our control, isn't gonna yeah. be in your control that you want it to work with. So you've already said what bars, yeah. what computer, okay. any other features you want it to have. So does it need to adjust angle? Does it need to hold a GoPro, yeah. that type of stuff. So all of those things that we're not gonna be able to control those yeah. bits, we need to know those. Okay, right, so we're on the computer. Talk us through the process of where we're at, because I don't have much of understanding of how this works. Um, yeah, so this is a CAD package. This is a, a piece of software. Uh, it's a Siemens NX CAD. Uh, this is what I use to design um, the parts that I print to manufacture the bikes that I make. Okay, so this is one of the sections here. Yeah. Bottom <laughs> bracket area. That's right, so that's a bottom bracket junction of a gravel frame, that one. Okay, so um, this relates to that section there on the screen. That's right, yeah. Now, do you have any designs that we can work from, or we've got to start from scratch for my head unit now? So, um, we can do either. Um, definitely, it's always easier to start with something that you've got. So yeah, I make a computer mount that attaches to the handlebars that I produce yeah. as part of my bikes. So um, the easiest thing in terms of, certainly in terms of time, yeah. would be to use that as a starting point and then make sure that it's got some of the features that you want to add into it. Any any part where it's like, you know, you've got things that need to interface, so you've got a computer it needs to clip in, you've got various bits that need to attach. Um, if you have got something that exists and you know it works, that's that's like gold. Okay. Uh, because there's a surprising amount of stuff that could trip you up. I mean, um, so this is uh, the mount. In fact, I've got one over here. Um, so this is the mount that I use on the handlebars that I produce. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, it's got a couple of features that are gonna make it useful for us. Yeah. Um, so first of all, it's got a fairly um, modular system for where you hold the computer. How on earth do we change any of the next bits? Um, the next sort of process? So this bit here is modeled in the computer already and there's various steps that uh, I do in CAD in order to kind of generate that, that data that makes that, that body. Uh, and there's a few little things that we want to add in for you, for your, your mount. So one of the, the main changes that I'd need to make to this unit here is is add a little GCN logo. Of course. So that you know it's yours. Okay, um, well I guess me talking to you is gonna slow this process down. Shall I what, put the kettle on, make us a drink? Yes, let's go for that, okay, like well, a coffee. I'll leave, I'll leave you to do the good work. <laughs> oh, over Albert. Sorry, Albert. 
Right, while um, Tom's over there doing the hard work, let me share with you quite possibly the one little bit of knowledge that I've got about 3D printing in titanium. So that is, when you receive the part out of the printer for the first time when it's finished, most of the time you're gonna need to surface or finish the surface of the component because it's a little bit rough and isn't very shiny. So a lot of the components here that Tom has have been through a polishing process so that it looks super shiny and that gives it that smooth finish. And then also, if the component that you're making has a face on it that needs to be made to a particularly high tolerance, so we're talking bottom brackets, head tubes, maybe dropouts of frames, then you need to machine that component afterwards to get the finish um, to the tolerance that you require. There you go, that's me all out of facts about 3D printing. Um, I'll tell you what, actually, if you want to know more about 3D printing and how it's changing the cycling industry, we've got a really cool documentary over on the GCN Plus app, so I can just recommend, probably better check that out after this video. Right, I should probably put the kettle on. Tom's gonna be thirsty. It looks like hard work over there. Right, Tom, how are we going? Tuck these to the side, here we go. Thank you, how are we getting there? Yeah, well it looks like the real deal to me. I'm guessing we've had the luxury of skipping through some of the steps of the designs process. Yeah, so typically um, with something like this, as, as early as possible in the process, yeah. um, I'll look to, to make some little test pieces to check that the various bits are working. So whether that's that it's going to hold the computer far enough away from the handlebar that it'll yeah. you know, clear when you put your head, sort twist your head main, unit. Like structural bits of it, make sure it actually fits in the right place. Yeah, exactly. Before you invest too much time in some of the really detailed work, like making sure uh, that it's going to be possible to manufacture it. So yeah. some of the detailed stuff that you need for additive manufacturing. If we didn't have the luxury of sort of skipping some of these steps, how long would you sort of estimate you'd normally allocate yourself for designing a small little part like this or maybe even the additional bits that we're going to add on, like the GoPro mount and that kind of thing? So yeah, it, um, it's, it's, well, possibly quite surprising. Um, yeah. I'd say there's probably a, a good week's worth of work in getting all of the little bits um, modeled and, and sorted because a lot, of, uh, the, a lot of the detail about how a computer might fit in and then clip yeah. Um, without it be clipping, being held too firmly in the clip, that sort yeah. of thing. There's a lot of iteration in, involved in that. There's a lot of that. aspects which I think is easy to overlook. So I've got a couple of plastic printers that I use for, yeah. for making you know, things to, to physically check rather than just looking at it on a, on a screen. Um, so I've got a couple of plastic printers that I use for this type of thing. Yeah. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a resin printer. Uh, which uses a, a vat of liquid resin that will cure when it's exposed to a UV light. Okay. Um, so we, we've sliced the part um, and that basically means that the printer has got an image of each layer um, that it's going to build so one a at a time. that's on the computer. Um, oh, okay, so it build, the printer builds up from that, does it? Yeah, so we've decided uh, what orientation the part is going to be built in yeah. and that's where additive manufacturing can get quite involved because deciding on how you're going to orientate it will have a big impact on how the part's going to come out. So it's on that memory stick? It's on here. Yeah. Uh, so we find the model. Yeah. And off it goes. Now I'm going to guess the speed that I can see that bed moving down, this isn't necessarily going to be a quick process. How long do you think this is going to take? No, so this, this print is going to, well, it's going to estimate that it's going to take two and three quarter hours, this one. So I'm, I'm probably not going to just make more coffees all day. That's no, probably only so much should we, coffee should you can pick drink. Should we pick this back up tomorrow? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, right. I'll come back tomorrow when hopefully we've got everything finished up. All right. Okay, right. Good morning. So I'm on my way back across the room to meet Tom to see the finished test print that's been done in plastic. Make sure all the tolerances are okay and stuff like that. I'm excited to see what it looks like. I'm not going to bore you with any long chat and waffle. I'll see you there. Yeah, 3D prints, 3D prints. Morning, Tom. Oh, yeah. All right, how's it going? All good, thanks. Printed item, look at this. That's it, we've got the plastic one we printed out yesterday. So it's all gone all right? 
Yeah. So this is straight out of the printer. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we removed some of the support material that was needed to hold it in place during the print. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, I've just test fitted it to the set of bars that we're looking yeah. to get it to work with. Well, certainly to me, it looks like a, a part that you could almost start to use, but I'm assuming there isn't a great amount of strength to this component, how it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's the same size and shape, and obviously, so we can test it in terms of it being uh, holding things in the right place and, and all of that. But yeah, the material that comes out of, of the printer that we've used certainly wouldn't be strong enough. I mean, it might survive a ride or two, yeah. but it would probably snap if you went to get the, 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 um, the computer off in a hurry or something like that, if you weren't gentle with it. So in terms of getting this printed in, out of titanium, now yeah. you've already explained to me that you don't have a titanium capable machine here. So firstly, I'm slightly disappointed by that because it was gonna be blue and cool. <laughs> yeah. So what, Sorry, how man. come we haven't got some of that big equipment? I guess it's cost maybe one of these things? Yeah, so um, it, they're very, very expensive machines. Um, running them is also uh, a fairly expensive process. Um, so certainly for me and the setup I've got here, um, I don't have enough space. Um, I also wouldn't have enough manpower to, to run some of those machines. Yeah. Um, and I certainly don't have enough money, so yeah. <laughs> so it's a case of we're gonna send our design off to get made and then how long until you think we can have the finished article? and we should see it back here in a few weeks' time. Amazing. Do you think you could send it to GCN Megabase or I have to come back for a third time? Well, if you're, you're good at making tea, so you can yeah. come back and uh, okay. have another uh, cup of tea. Well, in that case, I guess I'll be back at some point soon. All right, I'll let myself in. How's Hello. it going? Good, you? Yeah, good to see you. It's been absolutely ages. It's been a while. I reckon it's been a couple of months. Uh, unfortunately, oh, it has. Here you go. Look at this thing. You've got the real thing, though. This looks incredible. I can't believe how light it is, actually. Like, yeah, we've uh, hollowed it all out, which is something we didn't do on the, the plastic version. So it, it almost feels hollowed. as light as the plastic version. Yeah. It's kind of unbelievable. But even just seeing this, there is... Have you made some slight changes to it? Yeah, so um, we've uh, adjusted um, a couple of little bits on the, the back unit, the back, the bit that bolts to the handbars itself. So um, we've made it blend in slightly nicer to the bit that holds the computer. Yeah. Um, uh, and also stiffened it up using a couple of features inside and then this this rib on the outside. There's also, are these the little pieces that we need to add onto this afterwards? Yeah, uh, this will work with your Wahoo computer and then um, we've got a, a fitting that will hold a, a light or a GoPro camera underneath. So would it be possible one, to make it shiny, or could we also add a, some colour to this? Because, I mean, come on, I've seen some of the colours you could do. Look at this thing. Yeah, this so... Can, um, we, can we get it to look anything like any of those colours? Yeah, we can. So um, this is, as it's come out of the printing process, there's been some, some of the support scaffold that holds it in place whilst it's being printed has been removed. Um, but other than that, nothing's happened to it. So it's, it's, it is quite a, uh, a grainy, sort of almost like orange peel yeah. texture. Um, <clears throat> That can be smoothed in a number of ways. We can we can sand it, polish it by hand. You can use automated processes. Um, we can also just anodize it as it is. Often, you'll get a slightly more vibrant color from a rough surface when you're using oh, okay. yeah. ti anodizing on titanium. So um, we should probably just put some color on it as it is. All right. Well, you sound like the expert. Um, lead the way. What we're we going to do next then? Cool. Um, right. Yeah. So we'll get a wire wheel and brighten it up first. Cool. That's come up super shiny, hasn't it? Yeah, it does brighten it up nicely. <laughs> it smells, smells very metally. Well, yeah, it is metal, it is but metal. yeah. That's, uh, you get used to that. Basically, what we need to do is we need to strip off the oxide layer. So it's like a very, very top surface. Very top surface, which will, so titanium reacts with oxygen immediately and forms titanium oxide, which doesn't react with anything. Okay. So we need to get rid of that oxide layer. Which, so that you can then get the colours. So that you can then create a new oxide layer and you control the depth of it and that's what creates the colour. Right, so yeah. get the colour now. So it's going to come out there ready to be... Yeah, so that's all been etched now. Yeah. Get it in 
to anodize it. You can see it's starting to change color. Oh yeah. Whoa, look at that. It's like actual magic is going on in there. So every time I basically expose it to the voltage, it creates a slightly deeper oxide layer. And that's what's changing the, changing the color. There you go. <laughs> can you believe that? It just appeared right in front of your very eyes. I mean, it's not every day you get to see that, is it? Right, okay, Tom, this thing looks absolutely incredible. I'm like super happy with how it's turned out. Like, thanks for all your hard work. No problem. So I hope it's been interesting for everyone at home to see the process of how it works. I've certainly had a great time doing it. Thanks again for all your help. And if you guys at home have enjoyed seeing this video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know what you think of my new head unit mount in the comment section down below. Right, Tom, I'm out of here. Thanks very much. All right, no problem. I'm gonna go for a ride. Enjoy. Better not forget my head unit. I'll get it in there. There we go. Thanks. <laughs>